it's Lenny Murphy of the Green Book, and here today on behalf of my friends at Dakota, uh, talking to John Winley of Altitude CX, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what Altitude CX is doing with Dakota and about uh, Dakota's solutions around CX overall. So, John, welcome. How are you? Doing great. How are you? Doing all right. You know, um, uh, my living room has the exact same shade of yellow. So I feel a real affinity for you now. <laughs> so since, since we both have this yellow wall, um, but <laughs> it's sunshiny, right? Yep. Yeah, it's hard to be bummed when you're in a yellow room. Yes. Absolutely. All right. So, John, tell me a little bit about yourself and about Altitude CX. Um, 27 years into my career, I've spent probably the last 20 odd years in the tech arena or the basically the telecom industry. I was an executive at a variety of different telecommunications and IT outsourcing companies. Uh, my career was really focused in two areas. One was running large program management organizations and uh, associated Six Sigma teams. And then the other has been in the CX arena. So CX being customer experience. Uh, I spent the last probably 10 to 12 years uh, either consulting in the CX arena or managing, starting and managing programs in two big uh, Fortune 500 companies uh, over the last decade, like I mentioned. Okay. And John, one uh, kind of logistical thing. I'm, I'm testing on a new headset and it's very sensitive. Uh, I'm hearing a little bit of crinkle if I move my head. Are you hearing that, or is that just uh, just me? I don't hear it, but uh, I I'll pay uh, sharp attention. See if I hear it any. Okay. All right. Good. So now, and listeners, if you happen to hear any small uh, weird background noise, apologies. It's it's a new headset. So tech is getting better. So it's getting more sensitive, right? Uh, this may be one of right. the circumstances where that's not a good thing. All right. Anyway, back to uh, back to the point of the call. So the focus on CX. Um, the, for those who don't know, customer experience is certainly a kind of a subset, larger category within the broader insights space, uh, but it bridges the gap between operations and uh, in insights in most organizations. Um, uh, although the focus is generally around operations overall in terms of enhancing uh, operational effectiveness, isn't that the kind of the end goal of CX programs? Uh, reduce churn, all of those type of good things. Is that a good, uh, good explanation, John? Yeah, it's emerged really in the last 20 years and become its own discipline. And where we are now is is it's become a discipline that focuses on uh, everything that touches the customer's experience. So the entire customer journey, uh, as that company you're uh, you're interacting with your customers, uh, and then all the processes that are behind that, uh, and everything from culture that underpins the processes, the way that people operate within the company, to uh, systems and, as I mentioned, process. So it's it kind of encapsulates everything that could be done correctly or incorrectly in a company to create a good customer experience. That's where we are now. And then the associated measurement. So where we are today in that industry is we've put a lot of, most of the companies have put a lot of attention over the last, you know, the last decade into uh, codifying and what I call routinizing the process of getting feedback from all the different channels, all the different ways that you can get feedback from the internet or from surveys, which has been the primary method uh, to uh, doing actual physical interviews, sitting with customers and talking to them about the experience that they're having, and then trying to take that information and do something about it. And that's basically why we're here today is to talk about a, a better way to get to that analysis and not have to use tons of resources and be able to get to the heart of the matter quickly. Okay, so traditionally, uh, MPS scores have been a big uh, uh, kind of codified component um, within CX, particularly around the kind of the satisfaction uh, uh, aspect of that. Is that right? Yeah, it's interesting. When I started doing this formally, it was about it's about twelve years ago. I got into it. It was really long surveys. It was really just around customer satisfaction yep. where you would ask a myriad of questions and you'd have these big scorecards where it would it could have as many as 20 or 30 or 40 questions and it would be a, a Likert scale of some type. And so people were filling out these big cards and asking endless questions. Well, about 10 years ago or so, uh, the idea of NPS, the Net Promoter Score, the idea of advocacy. Would you advocate on my behalf? Would you recommend me? Uh, came into uh, prominence 
and became the way that people are doing it. There's still CSAT out there. It's perfectly relevant, but NPS has kind of become the, uh, uh, I don't know, it's the probably the best way to do it right now. Yeah. I got my start in research and doing satisfaction research, health plan satisfaction research. Yeah. And I still have nightmares about some of those questionnaires. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, <laughs> right. yeah, 20 years ago, we were telephone based satisfaction research. Um, yeah, you're shaking yeah. your head. You feel my pain. All right. So, a better way. That brings us to yeah. Dakota. We're we'll past um, that. Yeah. 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 So full disclosure, uh, uh, for those who don't know, I am on the, the Dakota board. I've uh, been working with them for a very long time. So that's hence why we're having this conversation um, as their pet researcher. Um, so, uh, so obviously you have a tremendous background in understanding the category and uh, the players and all the work that's being done and something drew you to Dakota. Um, what was that? What makes it different? Yeah, so about a year ago, I was introduced uh, by a mutual friend to uh, the Dakota team, and I became intrigued by what they're doing in the space. And I'm going to step back a little bit and describe some of my past experience with the two big programs I developed, and then bring that forward and talk about how what Dakota's doing is different than what I experienced while I was setting up those programs. So, as I mentioned, I've been at this about a dozen years, uh, you know, been in the process world much, much longer than that, and I love the idea of being able to, as we mentioned a moment ago, figure out what customers feel and think about their experience with you and then go fix the experience, which is how I got into the process world a long time ago. And so I was uh, fortunate enough to be asked to come into a couple of different tech companies and from scratch start an NPS program and then add the associated elements, the measurement teams, uh, the Six Sigma teams, program manager to make sure we were actually fixing the things we said we would fix. And so I started that, that was long about the 2007 time frame with first company and the second company uh, was about four or five years ago, once my first company was purchased by the other. And so what we did was we created a, an intention around getting information from the customers through a big relationship survey. This is a B2B environment. And what we were trying to do was get our finger on that pulse. What is going on with the customers? How do they feel about us? Get that NPS score and then say, where do we go from here? How do we, how do we improve it? Okay, Because it really is proxy, seemingly, I mean, from all the research that I've seen, it is a fair proxy for the customer's experience. A, B, how you're going to do as a company, because if you've got more satisfied customers who are truly happy and would advocate on your behalf, they will tend to stay with you. The data that we found while we were doing the work uh, at both of the companies I was with, uh, proved that. We actually saw, a, uh, in one case, about a 15% increase in spend year over year for companies that actually advocated versus the ones that wouldn't advocate. So it was we were able to prove what we'd read in the, in the literature. So we set the program up. I'll, I'll start with the first company I worked with. It was about a billion-dollar IT outsourcing company. And we started doing the surveys. We had a big survey platform. We'd get the survey data in, and then we'd start charting all the data. Here's the NPS score. Here's the NPS score by the verticals of our customers. Here's the horizontals of our customers. And then we started teasing out why. We started trying to figure it out. Well, the way that we had to do it at that time was we had to have a lot of people locked in a room reading verbatim comments. And if you get good, and this is the irony of getting really good at getting response from your customers, we were getting up to 40, 45%, those are real numbers, response rate from our business customers and we would end up with thousands and thousands and thousands of verbatims. Yeah. Much less if we'd been in the consumer space and it was hundreds of thousands of, of verbatims. Because in addition to asking the NPS question, you will ask a few why questions. You know, why did you comment on the way you did? Um, what about specifically about the experience was the place that you were either happy or sad, et cetera. So we would go through, get that data and analyze it. And what we found was we would have to slug it out for four, six, eight weeks after the initiation of one of those surveys to try to rush to get all of this information, get it codified, as I said earlier, put it into big presentations and show it to our board of directors, our management team. Meantime, the world still turns. There's still things happening. Customers are happy or sad or whatever. So what I found from the big platform providers, I've worked with most of them in some capacity or I've actually consulted with companies that use them, was the survey stuff's great. They're really good at that. But the why, what happens once you get that data? How do you analyze that data? It wasn't quite where it needed to be. And I'll give you an example. One of the things that most of the companies that do this rely on are these, um, uh, they're, they're uh, word pairs. They're yeah. these heat maps where it shows word pairs. 
And so I would get these word pairs out, and that's the kind of analysis you would get out of the uh, platform. And it would say, uh, you know, uh, customer angry, um, you know, call long, <laughs> latency bad. I mean, you would get these pairs. Because you're like, what am I supposed to do with this? I, I, you know, that's great. And I remember I put the slides in the deck, show it to the board, we'd all nod our heads and look at it and go, oh, oh, uh, customer angry. But what do you do with it? The cool thing, and I'm going to cut to the chase, is what Dakota does is in real time, they are able through the algorithms that they've created that really look at two axes. The first axis is the emotion that the customer feels, and they use these imaginative questions uh, to get at what that emotion is, and then the impact, the significance of those emotions. And so what they're trying to figure out is, is magnitude. What is the magnitude of those feelings in terms of the impact that that magnitude has on the customer's experience, how they look at their end-to-end -end experience with you. So if you take any business, you would look at it, and there's a framework that's been out there forever that AT&T came up with. It's called LBGUPS, Learn, Buy, Get, Use, Pay, Support. So if you just use that as a generic framework and you hung it up there, what you would want to do is understand at which of the moments of truth those in, in the vernacular of CX, all along that journey, where are the customers happy and where are they sad? What's going to keep them with me and what's not? And the cool thing that Dakota does is in real time, while you're surveying customers, or it be it through a, a direct relationship survey or a, an episodic transactional survey, I bought something today and I had this specific experience today, they're able to, in real time, analyze the data coming from the customer and in some cases ask these imaginative questions and get to the heart of the feeling that that customer has. And then they're able to step back and look at the magnitude, as I mentioned before. And then be able to say, what should I do about this? And then the cool thing that Dakota does is they're able to create, they've created a brilliant closed loop process within their uh, software so that you can actually track the impact of going out and taking the action in your company to address specific customer instances of, of issues. And then be able to take all that information over time and chart it and see where you are going with those customers. Is it getting it better? Is it getting worse based on the drivers, the drivers of the experience that they're able to tease out of all of that data. So it, if I summed it up, what Dakota does, which I think is utterly unique, is it's quick. They're able to, in real time, get you focused on the right things, right? And they're able to cut through all the noise of the data and get to things that are meaningful. That you, when you come back to the thing I said earlier, that they get, they ask these imaginative questions and they get to the emotion, and then how much that emotion impacts. I, I haven't seen anything quite like what they do. I think it's utterly unique. Uh, I, I'm very impressed with the way they uh, have developed uh, their methodology and how easy it is to use when you're, uh, you know, working in this field. So it's far more than just text analytics. The, uh, which the word pairs you're talking about are word clouds, right? That's the basics. What uh, so the Dakota data is designed to be actionable uh, because you understand the non-conscious drivers of behavior and through those comments what that links to. Are they able to uh, predict uh, impact around churn? Uh, can you get into really kind of those operational metrics off of this data as well? That hey, if we continue to have these folks with these issues, this is the chance of losing them. Uh, can you tie it into the sales force so you can look at the value or other CRM systems to so look at the value of the customers? Uh, I would assume those algorithms allow for kind of infinite flexibility in expanding the usefulness of the data. Yeah, it's a great question, and I'm, and I'm glad you asked that because it, that is really where you want to go with this, right? I mean, in, you know, I used to go and present the data on NPS, and, there, and the score would go up. We were able to, uh, in the original company we did this in, or I did this in and we, as, with a team, uh, we were able to raise the score about 35, 40 points over a couple, two, two and a half years. But uh, who cares? I mean, so, okay, so the score got better. Is my company better or the customer staying? So what we started doing and what you can do utilizing Dakota is you, we were able to look at the financial data, create models, combining financial data with the operational KPIs, the key performance indicators of the business, plus the survey data and create, I don't want to get too cute with the terms, but we would create some regression models to see what was impacting the customer's experience the most and keeping them there, don't churn away, give us more share of wallet, and also, you know, over time, give us an increased spend. 
And so that's what you, you know, at the end of the day, that's what you care about. I mean, you want to have, I, had, I worked with an executive, he used to say this all the time. He'd say happy employees equal happy customers. So one of the things that we would do is we would use uh, NPS internally to analyze how our employees felt across the organization, not just about the company, but across the organization, which you can do with Dakota, which is an utterly brilliant use of Dakota. And we would see how our employees felt and what behaviors they're engaged in and see if we were on the right track with our customers and those scores plus the customer scores plus the financial data plus the operational data, you can create some pretty straightforward models to see, am I having the impact I want so that my company stays healthy, has good revenue, the customers stay, and we become strategic partners with them in the end. And this is one of the things, the final things I'll say, Dakota enables you to create strategic partnerships. And I don't want to overstate it, but this is a really cool thing. If you use this application software appropriately for you, you're able to really put, and I use this term all the time, again, it's that finger on the pulse, right? You get this sense of how that customer truly feels about you. And if you get it right and you fix the right things from a people process technology standpoint, as all the consultants say, if you fix the right things in priority, you should be able to have a better experience for the customer if you do it right. And ultimately, they stay with you and they are better as a company. So it, at the end of the day, Lenny, it's, it's I care. I care enough about you as a company to invest in something that will help me really get to the heart of what will make you more successful. And then we will become strategic partners and we'll truly care about each other's success. And, you know, at the end of the day, I used to say this all the time. In the tech industry, everybody's got access to pretty much the same technologies. So how do you differentiate? Well, you differentiate by caring enough. And, and you know, for me, uh, as I move forward, caring enough says get the right technologies, the right software in the right place that is able to real-time understand how the customer feels so that you can then take immediate and long-term action to create a better experience and ultimately make your partners more successful. Uh, and the cool thing about this too, that, right, is that, that Dakota does not require you to switch off of your existing basic survey infrastructure, right? If you're using Qualtrics or Medallia or or Question Pro, whatever, Desert Survey Monkey doesn't matter, right? That yeah. it's additive where it can sit on top, and all that's changed really is this basic uh, how you structure the verbatim question, the why questions, right? So yeah. It's a it's a great point because what you're doing is, yeah, you're you're basically doing an overlay. It's, it's almost like when uh, when you do BPM, when you do a business process management overlay over systems. Yeah. It's an analog for that. You're doing analysis over the top of whatever feeds are coming in. So you may have a, a, a survey platform. You may also have some, some survey bots that are just collecting information off your website. Right, you may right. be like I said, you may have like... I, you may have a Salesforce type tool where you're, you know, sniffing the internet, but you can aggregate all this information, extract it up, and look at it, and then be able to get to those finite points. Right, and have a new dashboard that sits over that with this additional KPI. Um, that right. What becomes a KPI? Yeah. Right. So that's incredibly smart, and it's 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 all a SaaS based solution, right? So it's sitting in the cloud. You know, you're dealing with this mostly via APIs. Uh, you know, right, so you're you're pulling the data automatically, um, so it becomes fast, efficient, and relatively inexpensive, at least compared to the uh, the comparison of collecting all the data primarily from the get go. Yeah, yeah, it's it's an it's an easier implementation yeah. uh, than you would with the big platforms. Uh, you get quicker to result, okay, and given the fact that you're getting to analysis that, that wins on two points, one it's quicker and it doesn't cost as much because you're not in having to invest in a bunch of staff sitting in rooms for weeks. And I've done this myself. I have sat and read personally thousands of verbatim. Oh, sure. The coding. Yeah. Yeah. And you, and you, it's just, it's, it's terrifying. And you know, and you'll get, and do you get them right every time? And sometimes one verbatim will have four categories of insight that they've given you. So every time you've got to, well, at the end of the day, what you want, is some type of, uh, you want to advance by technology. You want to be able to make it easier, more cost effective to do it, uh, and be able to get the data in real time. And in essence, that's what they do. It's a, it's a low barrier of entry. It's an easier technology to implement. Like I said, it goes over the top. And at the end of the day, as I always say, uh, if you're happy with it, you feel that you have really gotten that 
that insight into that customer's feel, and then you're able to go and fix things. You know? So it would be fair to say that Dakota takes existing data and makes it better while also making it actionable so the business yeah. can succeed more effectively than without it. Is that a pretty fair summation? That's a pretty fair summation. I mean, what you're what you're hoping for when you find something like this is is that it's not hard to implement. Yeah. That it is cost effective. That you really feel like you get bang for the buck, right? And that it'll change the way you operate. And if you can get to those things in fairly short order, oh my gosh! I mean, that is a cool thing to have. And I, you know, I, I can't, I couldn't speak more highly uh, of what they're doing. And I, uh, I think they're on the absolute right track and at the end of the day as I keep saying I just wear that term out uh, they're on to something in terms of being able to really understand emotional impact and magnitude uh, which is something that's utterly unique. Yeah. John this has been fantastic. Um, uh, glad that you and Dakota connected. Um, glad that we've connected had a chance to, uh, uh, to have this conversation. I'm sure that it will be the first of many or at least I hope it is. Well, I appreciate it, Lynn. It was a great discussion, great questions. Thank you so much. All right, John. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. You too. All right.